So I just got Michael Weber to admit uh, that he's been using a fake account on the Magic Cafe for the last 20 years in order to manipulate sales, in order to argue with people and to uh, bolster his own profile as a magic creator. I mean, what? If you don't know about this, you want to watch this video. So I did a really long video on Thursday and I talked about two giants in the magic industry that had contacted me and told me that I should not release my new trick ED seat. They told me it was very similar to a trick that was released in Real Secrets and, and that there's nothing that's been added to the project beyond what they put out uh, 11 years ago and that in no way, shape or form should I be allowed to, uh, to release it. And I documented on that video the whole process that I'd went through up until the point that I made the video, the back and forth with the emails and uh, and everything that was going on. And, and you can go back and watch that video. I'm not going to recap on that. A lot has happened since then, but I'm not going to recap any of that stuff. Suffice to say that at the time I said I felt that I was controlled and I felt that I was being manipulated. I felt that uh, these two giants of the industry were using their power to... Um, squash me and that it wasn't right and uh, I'll never forget the final paragraph in the last email that was sent um, which was sent by Michael Weber uh, one of those giants that I was referring to and um, he said it would be a shame if we had another red situation on our hands after Craig has spent so long uh, the last couple of years working hard um, and, and at the time I described that as a thinly veiled threat. That's not a thinly veiled threat. That's an out and out threat. That's somebody flexing their muscles and saying, if you don't do what I'm telling you to do, then simply, you know, I, I, I can ruin you. That, that this is the sort of thing that you would hear in a movie about mob bosses and the mafia. I mean, it's it's an absolutely ridiculous statement. And I've seen people on the um, the internet and a few people have said, well, why did I make the video? Why did I make it public? Why did I make a video about the whole situation? Everything should be handled behind the scenes. And Craig always makes videos about, about, about anything that happens. And I do make a lot of videos. And, and one of the reasons is I like to be honest and upfront with people. And I like to uh, just keep people of, informed of everything that's going on with me. However, in this situation, the reason I made the video is because I wanted to control the narrative. Make no question about it. I wanted to control the narrative. I felt that I was in the right. I felt that I had done the right thing. I felt that this project, ED Seats, was way more expansive than anything that had been released before, which was a single sheet of instructions in the secret club that you couldn't access. Um, and, and with the amount of uh, information that's on the EDC project from people like Pete Turner and Lloyd Barnes and Michael Murray and Simon Lipkin and so on and so forth. With all of that information, I, 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 you know, it, it was far and beyond anything that people had seen before. And it's something I'm very, very proud of. And I felt that I was being told that there was no way um, that they would allow me to release this and, and make me look good. And don't forget, the two people we're talking about, 11 years ago, they did the same thing to me before. Red was a horrible time for me. I'm not going to get into that either, but it was a horrible time. It was a horrible experience, and I didn't want to go through that again. And as I said in the previous video, I was in the wrong back then. However, even though I was in the wrong, I did the right thing immediately. I pulled the trick immediately. I, I you know, we, we arranged for everything to be handled with Bob King. They didn't need to come in all guns blazing. And one of the reasons the community came down on me is because how they manipulated things behind the scenes. And I didn't want that to happen again, especially when they were specifically... Re the people that started that 11 years ago were referencing it again as part of this conversation. So the reason I made the video is it was kind of a case of, well, if it's going to come out, it's going to come out on my terms. And if they're going to make a fuss about this, I would like to be the, per the person that tells people exactly what's happened. That is why I made the video, because I felt that my back was against the wall and I had no choice. And I don't regret making that video. I really don't. Um, since that video, a lot has happened. Now, in that original video, I never named these giants of the industry. But, uh, you know, obviously, 
since then it's come out very very quickly after I made the video there were tons of people that were speculating who it was uh, videos being made blogs being written uh, just an insane amount of information being put out there and very quickly people summarized that it was Michael Weber and Tim Trono and that's exactly who it was it was Michael Weber and it was Tim Trono initially the emails came through from Tim and Michael and then afterwards the emails stopped coming from Tim and they started coming from Michael and I'll tell you for why I want to be completely upfront and honest about everything here the reason and I'm speculating here but I'll tell you what I think the reason why the email stopped coming from Michael um, sorry, stopped coming from Tim and only came from Michael is very simply because uh, I reached out to Penguin as part of this whole process because Tim Trono works for Penguin Magic. And I do a lot for Penguin. I've released numerous tricks through Penguin. I'm releasing more tricks through Penguin. I've worked with them on tricks and downloads um, um, of, of their own that have nothing to do with me. I, the current Penguin Magic creator of the year. And I'm kind of like, you know, even if, Tim Trono believed this to be the case, and maybe he does, even if he believes this to be the case. Um, when you're working for a company that I've done so much for over the last year and a half, surely there's a better way to approach this than coming in all guns blazing, rather than just going, uh, pull it immediately, we don't, want that. we don't want to see this seeing the light of day, pull it immediately. No, rather than that, I think it would have been nicer to say, hey, Craig, uh, you know, give me a call. Let's have a chat. And I know that Tim Trono has been running around and he's been turning around to people and saying, oh, well, Craig could have reached out to me. Craig could have made a phone call. No, Tim, let's be crystal clear. Now that everything's out in the open, I couldn't. And the reason I couldn't, very, very simply, is because of three reasons. One, the way that you approach this whole thing. It was very confrontational. It would have been a totally different thing if you'd come in and you'd have approached it a different way. Penguin have got my number. Sean Dunn's got my number. It's not hard to get hold of me. You could have rung me. You could have rung me. And secondly, you're turning around and saying, oh, Craig didn't answer me. Craig didn't, uh, Craig didn't uh, come back to me. Craig was avoiding having any conversation with me. No, Tim. No, Tim. Let's be crystal clear about this. You contacted me. I immediately rang Lloyd. I immediately rang Murphy's because it's their product. They need to be aware of this. And then I contacted Sean at Penguin. And I told Sean about this. And he was the one that said to me, hold off, don't reply, I'll see if I can sort it at my end. And I'd just like to say now for anybody watching this video, that I love Penguin to bits. I absolutely love working with them. I think that Sean Dunn and Mandy Hartley are two of the nicest people I've ever met. And, and everybody at Penguin is amazing. I have a fantastic relationship with them, which is why one of the first people I rang up was Sean Dunn, who I consider a friend. And I don't blame Penguin for anything that's happened about this at all. But he was the one, Tim, that told me to hold off. He was the one that said, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't, don't, don't make any phone calls. I'm going to look into it. Now, while he was looking into it, you then decided 24 hours later to, to send that same email to Murphy's. And then Murphy's replied to you almost immediately. You know how I remember that? It's because the first email that came back from Michael and not you was saying, thanks for your speedy reply. That was the first sentence. Thanks for your speedy reply. So within 24 hours of you reaching out to me, Tim, they got a reply. And to be clear, to be absolutely, completely crystal clear, Tim, it was not Pat Murphy's that was replying to you. Yeah, you were getting a reply from Murphy's, but it was coming from me. I was the one that was putting all of this together, but I didn't want to contact you myself. I wanted it through Murphy's. And I damn sure didn't want to phone you. Why? Because, Tim, I couldn't trust you as far as I could throw you. That is why I didn't want to speak to you over the phone. So when you sent me that little, when everything started going south and we started finding out about new guy, that right there, that is when I was kind of like, whoa, 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 no, 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 no. And then you emailed me, didn't you, Tim? You emailed me saying, hey, buddy, uh, I'm in California. It'd be great to chat. Here's my phone number. Hope you're well. One sentence. That, that, that was where... So when all of this stuff was going on, and all of this stuff was going on with New Guy, and we'll get to that in a second, that's when you decided to send me the nice little email. And I told Murphy's to tell you that I didn't want to speak to you.
And that's when you started texting Murphys again, wasn't it? That's when you were texting Murphys. Oh, Craig's made a big mistake. Oh, Craig's done the wrong thing here. Craig's made a big mistake. He's making the same mistake that he did 11 years ago. No, I didn't want to speak to you, Tim, because I don't want to get... Uh, I don't want to get screwed over again. I want to have everything on record between you and me in writing by email. Just to be clear, Tim, just so you know, because I know you're wondering why I didn't speak to you. And then afterwards, you know, obviously I was communicating with Penguin. I've just been on the phone or Skype or Zoom nonstop over the last three or four days. And I know that Penguin asked you to apologise to me. And that's when you sent me another email a couple of days later or a day later, where you said, hey, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm, well, you didn't say I'm really sorry. What was it? I'm sorry if you felt like you were being attacked. No one should feel like that. Like it was like that little half-assed apology, which which was an apology, wasn't a heartfelt apology. Um, and I, 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 I've, I've told Penguin that. But I also know that while you were making that apology, you were contacting Murphys and telling them that I was still in the wrong and 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 that uh, I'm uh, making a mistake and blah 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 blah. You know that you only made that apology because you were told to. But here's the thing, Tim. I don't want your apology. I don't want anything from you. I don't want anything from you or Michael Weber because for the last four or five days, I have spent the entire time looking over my shoulder, worrying about what's happening next. That's what I've had. And it's been, it's been mentally really draining. I have to be completely honest with you. It's been completely mentally draining. So be crystal clear. I don't want to speak to you. I don't want to call you. And I don't accept your apology. You could have dealt with this in a much different way. But here's what you and your little buddy Michael were trying to do. You were trying to discredit me. And that's when we get to Michael Weber. Michael Weber. One of the best, most well-known creators of magic and mentalism in the world. Literally written the book. One of the most powerful men in magic. And everywhere you see Michael, Tim isn't far behind. You see the two of them together. And Michael, I mean, let's just think about this for a minute. For those of you that don't know, very shortly after Michael Weber, um, and very shortly after I made that video, a thread was started on the Magic Cafe. And very shortly after that thread was started on the Magic Cafe, uh, a guy called New Guy posted uh, talking about talking talking about me and, and 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 talking about me in a very negative way, and uh, and and I'm a thief and a ripoff and blah 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 blah. And the way that the, and and it's a horrible post. I mean, the, 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 if you actually read through it, and you actually read that post. It's really nasty, um, talking about how Craig went into hiding and, uh, and, and uh, you know, ran away from the community after his lies and deceit and cheating. I didn't run away from the community. I didn't run away from the community. I went and did something else. Uh, I left. I left, yes. And it wasn't on my own terms, but I left with every intention at one day to potentially come back. By the by, you then went, uh, new guy then went on to say, uh, you know, like, uh, Craig's a thief and, uh, um, you know, Michael Webber. I love that final line. What was it? I really, I just thought I'd get my iPad because I wanted to make sure that I got this right. Um, yeah. Uh, th this last paragraph, my money says we'll have more tears, tirades and excuses from Petty and Weber will just keep creating great magic. I hope BS like this doesn't make Weber stop sharing. Um, yeah, so uh, Craig got caught with his hand in the cookie jar again by the same person for the same thing. So, so that post by new guy popped up and I, I just looked at it and I thought, well, that looks very much like Michael Weber. Because I've been reading his emails over and over again, and the sentence structure looks similar. I'm not an expert, but, you know, I've done this long enough. I've been in sales long enough to recognize this sort of thing. So I called him out. I said, hey, it's Michael Weber. And then new guy came back on and said, uh, no, I'm not. I'm not Michael Weber. Um, I just, uh, I'm just a big fan of his. Um, and, and then we had several people um, at a post. There was a lot of posts, but eventually... We had a post from somebody, here it is, uh, called Pseudo Nim, uh, who said, um, I'm going to drop a big bombshell here, one that will have dire consequences. I know Michael Weber. Would you like to know the depth of his deception? This is fact. 
I have the messages between him and I to prove where he asks me not to disclose his identity on the cafe. I cannot in all good conscience sit here in silence in light of recent events. Michael Weber is new guy. Um, and he makes multiple posts um, about Michael Weber. Uh, and uh, one of them here, it, this is not speculation. I have the messages between him and I to prove he was an, uh, once a supporter of my short-lived periodical, Skeleton to the Closet. He and I have published together in a volume, Scryer's Elite by Richard Webster. I know that I'm committing suicide with this omission about Michael, but I've never been one to back away from controversy and merely trying to do what I feel is right. And I support Craig 110% with this. And uh, yeah, I mean, now, even when he did that, and he says here, I don't know Craig personally, never interacted with him. I am basically placing my neck on the chopping block for a complete stranger. I have a few releases of my own that have set to come out this year, and I suspect this ordeal might affect them negatively. I hope not, but it's a very real possibility. So we had this, uh, th th we had that. So, hey, I'm uh, uh, this person's Michael Weber. New guy then didn't respond at all. And more evidence came out that he was Michael Weber. Um, and one of the biggest pieces of evidence was posted on the cafe. Uh, and somebody posted a link to a post by New Guy from 2016 in the secret form of the Magic Cafe describing a trick, uh, which used a cheek-to-cheek -cheek deck on a photocopier, describing a trick. Um, and writing it up and saying, hey, this is my trick. Here's a description of it. Here's, the, here's how it works. Wanted to share it with all of you um, and uh, had TV rights reserved at the bottom. And then another link to the Conjuring Archives where that exact same trick was published by Michael Weber in one of his uh, e-books a couple of years later which is kind of basically categorical proof that it's it's Michael Weber. So let that just sink in for a minute. So Michael Weber has been using a fake profile on the Magic Cafe for a 20 years. That's how long he's been doing it. And he's been going to the point where he's been um, misspelling his own name to try and lend credibility that he's not Michael Weber. But he's been using this fake profile for 20 years to... Uh, basically, any time there's something negative said about Michael Weber, he jumps on and defends Michael Weber. Um, he uh, will regularly shill his own products. He will tell people that he's got everything that Michael Weber's ever produced and it's the best material ever. Like fake reviews, all coming from this one account that's been used for 20 years. For 20 years, he's been attacking other creators. Uh, there's a couple of instances that I posted on the cafe where he was attacking people like Geraint Clark uh, for ripping off a Michael Weber trick. He's been using this profile to manipulate and control people and to further his own agenda for 20 years. So when he didn't get what he wanted from me, he went on the cafe with this fake username and started to try and discredit me by using this fake username, which for me, just, but this is, just think about this for a minute. This is Michael Weber. This is Michael Weber, right? How, and then go back and, and have a look on page one and look at that first post that he made, knowing it's Michael Weber. It's just sick, really, more than anything else. Some of the stuff he's saying, that, you know, my money says we'll have more tears, tirades and excuses from Petty. And Weber, remember, he is Weber, will just keep creating great magic. I only hope BS like this doesn't make Weber stop sharing. You know, I, it, I, I have no words. I literally have no words. So we're in a situation where Michael Weber is new guy and now radio silence, no communication at all. No communication with me, no communication with Murphy's, no communication online, nothing. Um, and then all of a sudden, uh, the Conjuring Archives starts getting changed. Now, Dennis said that's because, uh, Dennis Bear, who runs the Conjuring Archives, said he just decided to add um, the information about real secrets to the Conjuring Archive. What's happened? If you don't know, the Conjuring Archive is like a resource that all creators use to credit check and fact check if anything's been out before. So it's generally a go-to place for me when I'm researching anything and I've gone in many times and typed in stuff. And if you typed in receipts and you look at all of the tricks that came up with receipts, there was no mention of anything to do with the age card principle with receipts when I looked at the Conjuring Archive. And in my original video, I, I, I explained 
explain that. I said that there's no reference. The only reference that you could find was for matrix receipts that use the matrix principle, nothing to do with new age. Uh, sorry, nothing to do with the age card or the calculator card principle or the binary card principle. Nothing like that. There was nothing. And then all of a sudden, somebody posts a link to the Conjuring Archive, and now... You look in there and all the information about real secrets is in there and all of the information about uh, uh, not just real secrets is in there. But now when you type in receipts, you see, hey, age receipts published by um, uh, Michael Weber as part of real secrets and real secrets. It's, it's got its own section in there. Now, I looked at that and I was like, hang on a minute. This is literally trying to rewrite the history. What we're trying to do now is literally try to rewrite history because anybody who watches this video that I made in five years time and then goes to the Conjuring Archives and goes to check the information that I was saying will see that that's apparently factually incorrect. It's literally trying to rewrite history. Now, Dennis jumped onto the Magic Cafe and said, there's nothing nefarious going on here. Um, he just chose to start uploading the footage from Real Secrets because he was a subscriber and he thought he should upload that, which doesn't make much sense because as part of the thing with Real Secrets, the deal was if you're a subscriber, you'd never talk about that. You'd never talk about what the tricks were. You'd never talk about what the effects were. You'd never talk about anything like that. You definitely don't put it on something like the Conjuring Archive. And there was no expiry date about that. There was no expiry date. It wasn't like it was like, well, you can talk about these tricks in five years' time. It was, you never talk about them, which is why you couldn't find anything about age cards, real secrets. There was just nothing out there. Um, and then all of a sudden now there is, and I don't understand why, even if it was, first of all, it's very convenient that it's been updated right now, a couple of days after all this has kicked off. Now we decide to update the Conjuring Archive with information on, on real secrets and age card principles. It's, it's a very convenient time for all of this to happen because, you know, you can see on the, on, on the Conjuring Archive when it's been updated, it got updated on the 3rd of February. You can see that on Friday, the 3rd of February, all of the stuff on real secrets was updated. Very, very convenient, as far as you ask me. And then why did Dennis put it on there? If he's a subscriber, he knows that you can't talk about that. People got kicked out of real secrets of putting information like that on. And, and if he's following this whole thing at all, then he would not want to put it on because it's going to change the narrative. But, you know, I, I don't know Dennis, and apparently he's a stand-up guy, and Tom Stone posted on the Magic Cafe, who I have all the respect in the world for, and said that, you know, there's nothing nefarious going on here and put it to bed. And if there's one person I trust, it's Tom Stone. So fair enough. It just feels very, very convenient. The timing feels very convenient. Anyway, we get to a point where um, more and more people are posting on the Magic Cafe about Michael Weber. More and more people are po posting on the cafe about Tim Trono. And, and then you get uh, a post from New Guy. And uh, the post simply says, uh, congratulations, Craig. You win. Best wishes. Or something like that. It's a, a very short. New Guy just commented and said, congratulations, Craig. You win. Best wishes. No email to me. I haven't had an email um, from Michael Weber. Um, I haven't had an email from Tim Troner. I haven't had any communication, near, neither has Murphy's as far as I'm aware. There's nothing that's been put out officially by Michael Weber. It just literally is, congratulations, you win. Congratulations, Craig, you win. Best wishes. That's it. Which, to be clear, is one of the weirdest things I ever, I've ever seen. I needed to read it like five or six times. Um, and I have a couple of issues with this, but then I have a request for everybody that's been watching this video. And, and the issue that I have with it, and I have to talk about this, the issue that I have with it is that this isn't a game, Michael. This is not a game. It's not a game that you can win or lose. You were playing with people's lives and you have done this for the last 20 years underneath your persona on the Magic Cafe. Go back and look at all the posts that New Guy has made. And look at how many times he has manipulated the events that are taking place at that point in time. This is not a game that you can win and lose. I wasn't looking at this as a game, Michael. I was looking at it as 
I don't want to say fighting for my life, but at times it felt like that because I knew I had an industry leader trying to discredit me to the point that he's using fake profiles to try and discredit me. I've got Tim Trono, who I know that I can't trust as far as I can throw. I've got the Conjuring Archive apparently being manipulated. I was literally just thinking, what is going to happen next? I was looking behind me every few seconds. This is not a game, Michael. It's not a game. And if you go back and look at my video that I made where I talked about this, I said the reason I'm making this video, and I was really scared to make that video, the reason I chose to make it is very simply because there are new creators coming into magic all of the time. And I've heard so many stories over the last few years, over the last few days, I've heard so many stories. People have come to me with stories about you. They wanted to stay completely anonymous, but they have given me a ton, an absolute ton of stories about you. Do you know how many stories there are about you, about how many times that you've deceived people, how many times you've manipulated people, how many times that you've done something behind the scenes and got away with it? I cannot believe the amount of people that are sending me messages of support and telling me that that is what you have done to them over and over again. Did you look at every single one of those times as a game? Was it fun for you? Did you enjoy the process? Because I guarantee you, as somebody who was on the other side of this game, I did not enjoy it. I did not wake up wanting to go and do this thing with you, this little game, this little tap dance that I won. I didn't want to do this, Michael. And I don't think anybody else you have chosen to play the game with wanted to play the game either. The fact that you, did, you describe it as me winning, I wasn't trying to win or lose. I just wanted to bring my trick out, Michael. That's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to bring my trick out. And I've said over and over again, if you deserve a credit, I'd be more than happy to give you a credit. And you could have approached this and Tim could have approached this in a completely different way. But the way that you have handled yourself and the way that you have chosen to do business in this situation is vile and despicable. This is not a game. That post was not an admission of guilt. That post was not an apology. That post was nothing more than a, I'm going to try and get the heat off me right now. And here's the thing. I know that you have done this in the past. I know you will continue to do this in the future. It is despicable. It is absolutely, completely despicable that you have chosen to do this. And off the back of this, you carry on looking at the Magic Cafe. And honestly, it's one of the most interesting threads that I've ever seen on the Magic Cafe. You carry on looking at the Magic Cafe and you see that on there, there's people posting a whole bunch of other stuff. There's people posting reviews to your book Lifesavers on Vanishing Ink and saying that this is being written by you because the sentence structure is the same and it's being uh, reviewed by somebody called Guy. And, and it seems like, like you use that, that term quite a lot when you're creating fake profiles. You look at uh, a, re a review went up on ED Seat. Um, just recently on Penguin Magic. So Penguin Magic have got ED seat. A one-star review went up and said, this is a complete rip-off, this is a disgrace. And it was from Deceptive Guy. So Deceptive Guy decided to give this a one-star review, even though nobody has it. Even if you ordered it from Penguin, you can't get it until Friday, uh, until the 10th of uh, February anyway. So somebody with the end guy, Deceptive Guy, He's leaving a one-star review on Penguin. Now, fortunately, they've took it down because they know that that is another example of manipulation. I'm not saying that you're a deceptive guy. I'm not saying that you're the guy that left a review for your own book on Lifesavers. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that it seems that over the last 20 years, you have lied, you have cheated, and you have manipulated events behind the scenes, and you have done so to further your own agenda, you have done so to manipulate people, you have done so because all you have cared about at any point is that you want more power, you want more money, and you have proven that you will do absolutely anything at any point to get it. That is a fact. And it's disgusting. But here's the thing, and everybody that's watching this video, I want you to do me a favor. Because I needed to make that statement about Michael because I've gone through hell the last two or three days and it has been horrible and I've not slept and I'm really tired. 
I've gone through hell. I really have. And I will never trust nor forgive Tim or Michael again. And as far as I'm concerned, I've got a copy of Lifesavers. I'm getting rid of it. I don't want to have anything to do with you, Michael Weber. I don't want to have anything to do with you. You're an amazing man. You're a genius. You are a wonderful creator. And there are many things in this industry that you have done that you should be proud of. And there are uh, plots and ideas and routines within this industry <coughs> that you have created and you have done. And you all of those accolades that you have received over the last 20 years are deserved. But there is another side of you that nobody should be happy with and nobody should should support and the reason I'm, I, I want to ask everybody who's watching this video to stop the witch hunt. <laughs> Please stop the witch hunt. I have seen posts going up on the Magic Cafe um, calling Michael and Tim every name under the sun. Every name under the sun. I have seen it. I have seen it over and over again. And it's not right. I don't want Michael Weber and Tim Trono to be put through the hell that they put me through 11 years ago. They've made a mistake. If anything, in the last 11 years, we've learned more about mental health. I know that genuinely, 11 years ago, there were days where I just didn't want to wake up. There were days when I felt that not waking up would be the better option. I don't want that to be anything that Michael Weber or Tim Trono would, 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 would want to experience. People are bringing up, I've, I've got links to blogs where people are bringing up um, Tim's reputation as a, uh, you know, Tim's past uh, career as a policeman and all of the scandal and all of the, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't even want to get into it, but the stuff that they're talking about in these blogs is disgusting. But he's put that behind him. All of the stuff with the taser guns and all of that and the manipulation, all of that stuff has been put behind him. It has been forgotten. He has moved on. He is now within the magic industry. We can't be putting blogs out there bringing that sort of stuff up. He might not have, he might, he might have friends or family that are not aware of this. And to bring this up, it's not right. To bring up, to, to, to constantly belittle Michael over and over again is not right. So I'm asking everybody to just stop. You know, I, I think if, if you want my advice, Michael, and you probably don't, but I'm going to give it to you because I've, I've been in a similar place to where you are right now, where the entire magic community is coming down on me with a ton of bricks. I've been there. You helped put me there. And my advice would be to take a step back. Take one step back to take 10 steps forwards. Leaving the magic community was the best thing I ever did. It really was. It allowed me to build a business. It allowed me to be focused and recapture my love of magic. And then coming back to the magic community was the next best thing that I ever did. So if I were you, I'd take a, uh, I'd take a step back. And uh, I, I, I don't accept your apology. Well, you haven't even apologized. But if you did, if you did apologize, I wouldn't accept it. And I know that you haven't had any admission of guilt here, but I, I, d I don't really want to have anything to do with you ever again. I'd rather it that you just leave me alone. That's all I want. And we'll leave it there. I hope that's okay. Now, in terms of, um, there's a bigger issue, which is come to my attention in the last two or three days. And, and that's, that there is a this this whole situation happens a lot. This whole situation happens a lot, where creators, big names. I called it the magic mafia in my last video, and I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but it feels like there's a magic mafia, a collective, a group of people that work together to manipulate a lot of stuff that happens uh, to further their own agenda. That, that's what we're seeing here with Michael and Tim. And I know it's happened before. Mr. Blonde, for example. I know who you are, Mr. Blonde. I've skirted around the issue. I know who you are. And I wouldn't be surprised if you're part of everything that's been going on. After all, 
I've had so many people reach out to me and say that they've had legal letters from you when they just mention your name along with Mr. Blonde in the same sentence online. I've made videos about Mr. Blonde. I've never heard anything, but so many people have come forward to me. You know who I'm talking about. There's somebody, a really great creator of magic that you bullied. You bullied, you called them up. You bullied them over the phone to the point that you made them weep. That is not on. And there are other people like you. There are a lot of other people like you. Every day, more and more people are coming and they're sending me messages and they're sending me emails and they're telling me about people in the industry that we, we have revered that are powerful and are giving me proof that they have been manipulating things using hidden um, agendas and using hidden usernames and fake profiles for years it's disgusting. It's despicable. It's terrible. And it needs to stop. Now, I know that there's people out there that go, Craig, um, you know, you shout and scream and you, uh, you know, you, you, I've had people call me a bully. And you know what? There's times when I go too far. There are absolutely times when I go too far. I promised myself when I came back into magic two years ago, I would do the right thing. I then started making rants. And uh, after a while, I stopped because I didn't want to be that person. I have done a few rants since then um, because I felt it was necessary. But even then, I've made mistakes. Just recently, with everything pro magic, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have made the video that I did the way that I did about Scott. And I've actually been communicating it with him and I've apologized many times. I went around that exactly the wrong way. I'm not perfect. I make mistakes. I make mistakes all the time. I'm one of the most imperfect people that you, you will ever meet. I make mistakes almost daily. Ask anybody that knows me. But one thing that I don't do is hide behind a fake profile. Why do I make these videos? Uh, out to, I'm talking about videos like this, not videos where I'm telling people how to do this or how to do that or how to manage an audience and all of that, all of the instructional videos and help videos. Not that. Why do I make videos like that? Because I want you to know that this is who I am. There is no hidden agenda. There is no fake profile. If you want to know what I'm feeling, all you have to do is ask me. There are no shades of grey. It's black and white. And I'm going to tell anybody who decides to pull the same thing as Michael Webber. If you want to manipulate me or control me, that's fine. But I will be doing this over YouTube. I will be doing it because I don't want to be in a situation where I feel like I'm being threatened, coerced or manipulated or controlled or bullied. I don't want to be in that situation. And for all of those bullies that I'm finding out about, there is another video coming. And there is another video coming shortly. My office currently looks like a scene from Prison Break. If you remember the scene from Prison Break when the apartment had pieces of paper everywhere with arrows pointing to it. You know, you might call me a conspiracy theorist and that's fine. But a week ago, if I'd have told you that Michael Webber, one of the biggest names in magic, would have been uh, using fake profiles and manipulative tactics to try and control the industry for the last 20 years, would you believe me? Or would you say that I'm full of rubbish? Now, I know some people would have believed me because I've heard so many stories about Michael Weber over the last couple of days. And so many people have said, oh, this is what he's done to me. This is what he's done to me. This is what he's done to me. But if I'd have told the majority of the magic community, they wouldn't have believed me. The amount of people that have come forward to me and posted on the Magic Cafe saying, I, I can't believe I've bought stuff from Michael Webber before because it's been hyped up by people like New Guy and I've been disappointed, but I just thought it was just me. There's people out there doing it all the time. Mr. Blonde does it. And there are others. And I'm taking all of this information, I'm putting it all together. And then I'm going to do a video laying out the facts and I'm going to name everybody's name. You heard that right. I'm going to name everybody's name and I'm going to back it up with facts. I'm going to back it up with 100% factual evidence. The bullying culture in this industry stops. The hiding behind fake usernames stops. The manipulation and the control stops. Because I've got nothing to lose. I don't care. Do you want to know why I won, Michael, even though I didn't win and it's not a game? It's because I don't care. I'm happy to take risks. Because here's the thing. I didn't get to where I am 
without taking risks. I've taken risks throughout all of my career. Would, has every risk paid off? No, absolutely not. However, if I'd never taken a single risk, I'd probably still be working at end power right now, selling gas and electric, and I definitely wouldn't be here. Taking risks has got me to the point where I am right now. And whenever there's a risk come up, I look at what the best case scenario and the worst case scenario is. And if I can live with that worst case scenario, I'm going to do for it, do it, go for it. What's the worst case scenario when it comes to something like this? The worst case scenario is I leave the magic community and I never come back. I've been there, done that, bought the T-shirt, didn't kill me. If anything, it put me in a happier position. So that's why I won, Michael, because I couldn't care less. I couldn't care less. So Michael Weber, Mr. Blonde, everybody else, and you know who I'm talking to you. You know who I'm talking about. You know. Keep watching this channel because there's a video coming soon and you're not going to like it. That's all I've got to say about that.